So a while ago I had one of my viewers write in and ask how I made a load tester he saw me use in one of my videos. So in this video we're going to cover how to make a load tester. So before we get into the build, let's take a quick moment to discuss our load tester we're going to be building. Now the type of load tester we're building is called a resistive load tester and essentially it uses wire wound resistors to act as a load on something. So essentially what the resistor is there for is to convert electricity into heat. Now why is this useful? Well let's say you bought a buck converter like this one and you want to put it through a stress test and make sure it outputs the correct power, make sure it's stable, make sure it doesn't blow up and send full voltage through to whatever components you have normally hooked up to it. So you can hook up your load tester, test it for a few hours, make sure all is well um, and then it passes the test or it doesn't. Uh, it's great for testing new circuits, maybe you've built something new and you need a load to a dummy load to test the circuit uh, without hooking up any expensive equipment before knowing that it actually works. Um, you could also test out amplifiers, so sometimes uh, audio technicians will want to run a 1 kilohertz sine wave uh, through an amplifier for various reasons and testing. And trust me, the 1 kilohertz sine wave is really ear piercing and annoying if you're playing it through a speaker. So a resistive load tester like we're going to build in this video can be advantageous because it's essentially, as far as amplifier is concerned, replaces the speaker exactly the same, uh, but it doesn't make your ears bleed, it's absolutely silent of course. So that is a couple of ways we could use a load tester. So now let's look at the components we're going to need. So over here I've got eight uh, terminal mounts, so these can accept a banana plug in the end or they can screw down onto some bare wire. And no particular reason I got these colours, there is no positive or negative with the resistors we're using naturally, uh, so just get whatever colour you like. I've got 4mm by 8mm long uh, pot rivets to secure the wire round resistors in the enclosure later. You can use nuts, screws, bolts, whatever it takes you fancy. Now let's talk about the style of resistor I'm using. These are wire wound and they're mounted in an aluminium heat sink to help dissipate the heat. And you can scale this up or down to suit whatever requirements you want. So all the resistors I've got here are 50 watts. However, if you need a 500 watt resistor, you can buy that. So just use this as a template and build from it. Uh, I'm going to be using two 16 ohm resistors and two 8 ohm resistors for my load tester today. Uh, we're going to need some 3mm heat shrink, some 18 uh, American wire gauge tinned copper wire and an ABS jiffy box to house everything in. And as far as tools go it's going to be the basics. Drill, soldering iron, wire strippers, cutters, just the basics, nothing fancy. So let's get into the build. So the first thing I've done is gone ahead and marked out the front panel where I'm going to drill holes so I can mount all my terminals along them. So now I'm going to go drill that out with an appropriate size drill bit to mount my terminals. So I've finished drilling the holes and just screwing in the terminals into the top of the enclosure. And you'll note that I've mounted them quite high on the enclosure and that's so that when we install the resistors on the bottom plate here that it gives plenty of clearance for all the wire and everything to bunch up. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is mark out where I need to drill my holes for these resistors and then secure them to the bottom plate using these pop rivets. So I've got my wire wound resistors all pop riveted securely to the base of the enclosure and the next job is to wire up the connectors on the uh, resistors here to pairs of uh, terminals on the top. So these resistors you can see they have eyes uh, in the, the lugs and what I recommend doing is stripping off a fairly good length of copper and threading the wire through the eye and then bending it back on itself. And what that means is, should this resistor get hot enough to melt the solder, which it shouldn't by the way, but in the event something catastrophic happened and it did get hot enough to melt the solder, there's still a mechanical connection preventing this wire from just breaking free. And plus we're going to put some heat shrink over the entire connection so it's going to strengthen that even further. So I'm going to go ahead and solder all the connectors 
to matching pairs on the lid here off camera because that's going to be tedious and quite boring frankly so I'll come back when that's done so I've just finished soldering and heat shrinking all the connections so that there's no exposed connection points and basically every resistor is soldered to a red and a black so that I don't lose track of what is what and I've just uh, used a um, label maker just to remind myself that the 8 ohm and the 16 ohm are on either side so now we can sort of bunch the wires up and press everything together and then secure the enclosure with the included screws So now our load tester is assembled and ready to use. So now I'm just going to go over some basics um, of how you can use this in different configurations. So basically we're not limited to just 18 and 16 ohm loads. How we wire the resistors together can change the amount of resistance. We can either lower it or increase it. So for instance, if we wire the two 8 ohm, oh, they're over here, if we wire the two 8 ohm, um, resistors together in parallel you will essentially get a 4 ohm load uh, similarly if you wire them in series you'll get a 16 ohm load same with the 16 ohm of course if we wire them in series we get 32 if we wire them in parallel we get 8 ohms and you can effectively if you want to wire uh, the two 16 ohm uh, resistors in parallel you get 8 ohms and you might think that's a bit pointless because we've already got 8 ohm resistors over here well actually no there is a point to that because remember each of these resistors is rated at 50 watts so if we wire two of them in parallel uh, we get 8 ohms and we also can handle 100 watts of power rather than just 50 and there's many many other combinations you could do um, you know, you, it's not too hard to work out uh, what sort of resistance you're going to get with different combinations. Um, but failing that, a simple multimeter um, with, a, with a resistance test will tell you exactly how you've wired them and configured them. Um, I make up some little wires here just so that I can connect and bridge any of the resistors together I want. Uh, but a better alternative to just the wire is to um, buy some banana plugs and just make simple bridge connectors so you can plug any resistor into any other resistor for any type of testing you need to do. So one thing I briefly want to discuss is how we calculate how many watts of power we're pushing through our load tester because naturally we don't want to exceed the maximum rating on our resistors. So I'll leave a link in the video's description for this Ohm's Law calculator. So let's make up a hypothetical scenario. Let's say I have a 12 volt power source and my load test has 4 amps of current being passed through it. Hit calculate and we can see here our wattage is calculated at 48 watts. Another thing I want to discuss is heat management of these resistors. So although the resistor itself can handle 50 watts just fine continuous, um, the enclosure I've used here certainly will not like that for extended periods of time. They're going to get very warm and they'd probably get to the point where they melt or at least distort the plastic. So when you're building your enclosure, take things like that into account. You could use a die-cast aluminium box that's going to not only um, have higher temperature resistance but help dissipate the heat. You could have ventilation. Heck, you could even put a fan in the box if you wanted. So depending on your application, take those into account. Now, to demonstrate what 50 watts of power pushed through a 8 ohm resistor looks like, uh, I've got a 100 watt uh, 8 ohm resistor here as a test um, so I'm, but as I said I'm only putting 50 watts through this resistor I've got my multimeter hooked up to it with a k-type sensor so we're going to see the temperature and it's measured over here in Celsius so I'm going to run it for a minute and we're going to see how roasty toasty this resistor gets So we're at a minute now and you can see there's absolutely no sign of that temperature uh, hitting a threshold anytime soon, it's still rapidly climbing. Um, so yeah, definitely take this into account when designing an enclosure. 
if you're pushing high wattage through one of these resistors, you're going to need adequate cooling to handle that for a sustained run time. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give the video a like. That would be much appreciated. And also, if you like this video, go check out some of the others. I'm sure there'll be something in there you'll find entertaining. I've also got plenty of future projects planned and some very exciting ones at that. So do stick around. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.